I've started and restarted this episode so many times. <laughs> Learning how to cope with failure is probably one of the hardest things that you will go through as an entrepreneur because the stakes are very high. The more I try to work on my projects, first of all, the more I love it because you're converting your ideas into concrete projects that can actually impact the world, can make the world a better place. And second, because you are burning through your savings. So it means that after a while, you will end up eventually going back to a job. And if you already have this mindset that you, you are independent, that you can convert your ideas into projects, it's very hard to work for others. Unless you are super lucky and you find an incredible company that you are absolutely in love with, it's very hard. And the fact that this might be the most likely case, because most of startups do not succeed, right? Most of entrepreneur projects do not succeed. And the fact that this could be the end result, failure could be the end result, really stresses me out. When you put your heart and soul and sweat and tears into your project and you release it to the world, many people think that, ah, oh, what if people don't like it? What if I get bad comments? That's, that's actually good if that happens. Because the worst thing that can happen is that you will get no views, you will get no users. If you get bad comments, at least you know where you did wrong, you can understand them. If you get zero feedback, you are completely lost. Is it the project that is not good enough? Is it the market? Is it you? There's so many questions and also many, many answers. If you go to search for it, they will say it's you are not finding the right or solving the right problem. You didn't define your target users. You have to invest more money. Your product sucks. There's so many possibilities that you feel paralyzed with all the things that you might have to do to actually fix the problem. And if I go back to many of the interviews I did, let's say the one, for instance, with the sailing Frenchman, and I asked him, did you ever stress out? He, he said that he was about to run out of money once he got his sponsorship. And I asked him, Hugo, did you ever stress out? Like, how could you live with that stress? And he said, like, no, I, I, I don't think about it. If I have to, I will just find a job, a small gig to get the money and go back to my passion. So that's not something that stresses me out. And then I asked the same to Hendrik in this uh, Bread Code YouTube channel that has a lot of success, by the way. And I asked him, what if there's a video that you release and doesn't have the success you wanted? He says, yeah, it's tough for the first day. Then I relax, drink a beer, next day I, I go back with double of the force. So this is the mindset. And that's why I guess there's so many life coaches and business coaches nowadays. A lot of CEOs have them because it's really a mind game. You have to be able to decouple your bad feelings, your bad thoughts with your project. And you just have to keep on going. This mindset is it's a very tough mindset to have, but it's crucial I believe, if you want to succeed in your own projects. Just do it, right? Just keep on pushing and decouple yourself from these thoughts. And it, I, I find it really hard. And in the, in the end of last week, I released my news release. And I, again, I didn't see the results that I thought the product deserved it. And again, I went spiraling, as you know. And I started researching, researching on how to get new users how to grow your app, how to get more listeners to your podcast. And I was researching, researching, researching. And then yesterday I was talking with my dad and he was talking about sustainability and about some, some things that are happening in Portugal. And I realized that for a long time, I haven't actually read a book or blog post about sustainability because I don't have time. It's weird. I have building a sustainability app but I don't have time to be up to date with the latest sustainability news and projects, which are crucial if you want to build a product in that market. Because I've been spending all my time trying to figure out why I don't have users. And then something clicked, which was you have to go emerge yourself in your community, emerge yourself in the problem they are solving and be active in that community. So I opened up my Twitter account on uh, Change It and I started going through all the hashtag sustainability, hashtag climate change 
posts and I just had fun. I read about it, I answered people and suddenly I'm, I'm having more likes, I, I'm getting new users and I am at the same time learning about this passion that is sustainability. I've already watched the documentary, read a bunch of news. Most of them are not very good, you know, climate change. But anyways, finally, I realized how to align getting users, getting new users and still learning about your passion and about the product that you're trying to solve. You just have to be part of this community. And Hendrik, he does this. If you remember in the interview with Hendrik, he said that he released in this GitHub a repository full of recipes, of sourdough bread recipes, and it got more than a thousand stars in the first week or so. And the reason why he's so good is because he's so passionate about baking bread that he's the first one to comment when someone writes something on Twitter or Reddit. Because he's there, he's available, he... He, it, because of this, he fully understands the problem and the market, and that's what I'll be doing now. If I'm building a product in a specific niche, if I'm building a product on climate change, I'll be the first one on Twitter if someone makes a question. If I'm building uh, this podcast of wannabe entrepreneur about entrepreneurship and, and startups, I'll be the first one there to answer when someone has a question. I'll be listening to all the podcasts. It's crucial to do so. And... I will focus on that instead of focusing on what if my project fails. In the end, that's what we have to do. In the end, we just have to ignore the bad feelings and keep pushing. And um, again, as an entrepreneur, you will have it's a roller coaster. You have your ups and downs. And I had my down for the past two or three days, and now I'm back up. And let's let's do it. Let's do it. This was another wannabe entrepreneur. See you tomorrow.